Hi, thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We the Govern. Today we're going to be talking about the decay of Seattle and the impact on Washington State. Okay, we're back to Washington State, and today I wanted to specifically focus on the city of Seattle. A lot of my videos reference Seattle, but not so many of them are focused specifically on Seattle. And I think that's important because Seattle has oftentimes been in the news lately for a lot of crazy political activity, a lot of uh, crazy things, the Chaz Chop area that was seceded as a uh, special zone with the Antifa BLM uh, activists earlier this summer, and other reasons have kind of put Seattle on the map. Now, I, when I went to college back on the East Coast, I didn't tell people that I was from Washington because when I did that, they'd always think that I was from Washington, D.C. So as shorthand to describe where I was from, even though I didn't live in Seattle at all, I would always just say I'm from Seattle just to make it easier. Nobody knows where Federal Way is. Nobody knows where Newcastle is. They do know where Seattle is. Seattle has a reputation, and I believe that Seattle is in the middle of a serious decay right now. Now, usually when you mention Seattle people, whether it's, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, they would just think primarily of the Space Needle, images of the Space Needle, and maybe Mount Rainier in the distance, beautiful Puget Sound, just kind of this combination of images that oftentimes would include ferry boats coming across the way, kind of iconic Seattle imagery. Uh, maybe they, if they know Seattle a little bit better, they would even know about the float planes on Lake Union, the ability to fly up to the San Juans, and just kind of this imagery that really sticks with Seattle. Oftentimes, Pike Place Market, the iconic Pike Place Market in downtown Seattle is, is uh, a real classic way of imagining Seattle and kind of a reflection on historic Seattle when the Pike Place Market was uh, first created and assembled in, uh, by local residents. I know my great-great-grandmother was involved in selling flowers in the Pike Place Market. And it was a big part of my family's history. We grew flowers down first on our first farm down in the uh, uh, basically Rainier Valley area. And then eventually when we moved it to Tukwila and we would come and bring flowers, uh, oftentimes like these dahlias or other flowers that you see here that they would, gr they would grow. And I grew up on stories of my uh, grandparents and especially my grandfather and my great-grandfather uh, bringing their flowers up to Seattle. And this kind of imagery of Seattle is really what sticks. Maybe if you live in Seattle and you're more involved in sports, you think of going to Safeco Field now that the Kingdoms was uh, gone many years ago, and that's what's replaced it, going and watching your favorite sports team there. Or maybe it's just going to one of the parks. Uh, Washington State and Seattle specifically is known for some of its green spaces. So Denny Park, one of the uh, original uh, parks in Seattle. However, the reality of Seattle today is really quite a bit different. I spent a couple weeks, uh, or a couple weeks ago, I went up to Seattle and spent a day, and I've been going up there frequently, uh, just recording some of what Seattle actually looks like today. And it's quite a bit different than what people show you. Here you've got a, a tent uh, located at a local parking spot. You have the broken windows from the buildings months after Chaz occurred, months, months after the major news reported on all the riots, the BLM riots and the Antifa ri riots down in Seattle, uh, you're still seeing many, many stores all over the place, still boarded up and still shut down. And when that is combined with the homeless problem in Seattle and the drug addiction problem in Seattle, it really is turning Seattle into a different place than it used to be, and certainly into a different place than what people would imagine it being. Uh, this isn't the image that people oftentimes have of Seattle when you mention it. Here you are right downtown at the men's warehouse. They have to put a sign up because all their windows are all boarded up. They have to put a sign up to say that they actually indeed are open because you sure wouldn't know if you came up to the store from the outside. And this is just one of hundreds of businesses all over Capitol Hill and all over Seattle uh, that are boarded up. Now, it's not just that, but it's the homeless camps located in the park. Here we are at Denny Park. Uh, I drove around Denny Park just because it had really been revitalized a number of years ago. A group called Friends of uh, Denny Park had started up, and they had really put some money and effort and time and uh, local community uh, volunteerism into getting this park uh, more ship shape. And yet now it's just basically become occupied by homeless drug addict camps, dumping garbage, uh, dumping their needles, filling it up with tents. There's no enforcement of any law of any kind really there. I mean, imagine with that playground there, would you take your children here? And the answer to that for most people who live in Seattle is absolutely not. 
who it, it, it's unsafe. And I know Daniel Westney at the Seattle Times recently wrote an article just about how disastrous uh, Denny Park has become and how even the very tolerant Seattle, which seems to tolerate a lot of terrible things going on downtown, uh, this is just becoming too much to them. And this is just one of many parks in Seattle and green spaces that are changing not for the good, but certainly for the worse, and making it appear like Seattle is just decaying everywhere you look. Now, it's not just the parks, it's not just the broken businesses, it's not just the trashed areas there, but even if you go down to Safeco Field and uh, you just go a little bit to the east of Safeco Field, there's these huge homeless encampments and drug addict encampments and broken down RV areas where uh, they're just starting to congest, dump a bunch of garbage, there's human waste, needles everywhere. Uh, would you want to come out of Safeco Field and walk down here to try to get to your car or uh, take that little walkway that stairs? Now, they locate them right next to these big lots where they can throw the garbage in there and where conveniently they can uh, put graffiti around. And it's not a bad place to locate a tent because you're underneath the covered area. But there's a lot more than just some tents located there. There's also these caravans of broken down RVs and uh, places that have become magnets for human trafficking and for prostitution and drug sales and addiction and fencing operations. And you just find these now spread out, in this case, for about half a mile. I didn't put the video of the entire distance of all of these broken down RVs. This is just a small area that you would see if you were deciding to um, take the chance and walk over from Safeco Field. This is what you're gonna see. And this isn't a sign of a healthy city. Uh, this is actually a pretty significant problem uh, in one of Washington State's, the major city in Washington State, the one that uh, uh, state's known for. And unfortunately, these problems haven't stayed in Seattle. They haven't confined themselves to Seattle. They are starting to spread. And that's why it's easy if you live outside of the city to dismiss the fact that there's this garbage and these homeless tents and camps and drug addiction and theft and crime and all these problems that are going on in Seattle. And it's easy to dismiss that and say, hey, I don't live in Seattle, it doesn't matter. But it spreads, just like the coronavirus, just like any other disease, just like fungus, it's just gonna spread. It keeps going and you can't stop the spread unless you're willing to confront and address the issue uh, where it starts and where it's worse. You have to go in and actually confront these problems in Seattle. And the confrontation of these problems does require a political will and a willingness to actually address some of the fundamental problems that exist and allow this type of lifestyle and these types of problems to spread. Here you are just outside of the city of Olympia. In fact, this is right near Ensign and Martin Way. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, when the, tr the leaves were off the trees, I went and took a drone and we flew a drone over just to take a picture of acres and acres of homeless camps that are spread out in this area. Uh, filling the area, it's actually, there's a wetland there, but just filling it with garbage, filling it with tents, filling it with stolen product, and, uh, stolen goods, all kinds of stuff. It's gotten so bad now that the nearby St. Pete's Hospital has shut down the road that uh, goes up to their hospital that was across the street from this uh, wooded area where the biggest part of this homeless camp was located. And they've shut it down for parking. They've ended all the parking down there because of the high crime, the broken down RVs, the horrible uh, environment that's being created and the unsafe environment for both hospital workers and for people who are going to the hospital. They're having to go past obvious prostitution situations, drug dealing, fencing operations, uh, probable human trafficking situations, and it's all connected to this homeless camp that's just been spread throughout the woods down here. And nothing seems to be done about it. And this is in Olympia, and yet uh, where it really seems to be spreading out from other cities. And Seattle is Dying was the uh, well-known uh, video that was done a couple of years ago by uh, Mr. Johnson there in, with uh, Como News. And he was detailing some of the problems, and it's almost a preview of what we see today in Seattle wherever we go. And of course, you can't watch this video without being fully aware of the significant problems that, of drug addiction. The drug addiction is just avalanching us, just like all these needles falling from the sky, flooding our communities, being given out by the millions in all the major cities now in Washington state. 
And they simply are a metaphor for the problems that we find everywhere. We see them laying on the streets and the parks. They collect them by the garbage bag full out of these areas. And the government is who hands them out. It's the government that keeps giving them to people. It's the government that encourages this creation of the homeless industrial complex. And it seems to infest government at every level where the, they claim they want to solve the problem. What they really do is create large budgets for outside interests to never solve the problem, only to ensure the problem continues. Whether that's quote unquote homelessness, whether that's drug addiction, whether that's mental illness. And it starts at the top. It starts with Governor Inslee and his complete and total unwillingness to actually solve any of the urban problems that exist in Seattle where he gets the majority of his votes. It continues on into the legislature, whether that's uh, the elected officials that are in Olympia, in particular the Democrats who have been in power for a long time, um, their unwillingness to actually solve the problem and to shovel more money at it, which seems to only make the problem worse. It continues into the Seattle City Council, whether that's Kashama Sawant or Mayor Jenny Durkin, who, while they may be fighting each other, don't seem to have a lot of difference in how the either, either one of them wants to perpetuate this homeless industrial complex and ensure that millions and, in fact, billions of dollars get spent every year going nowhere, solving nothing, and only making it worse. We have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to look at this problem differently and to first even accept that there is a problem, a denial of which seems to be very common with a lot of our political class and certainly the bureaucrats. And unfortunately, the approach that we've taken now, creating this homeless industrial complex, isn't going to solve the problem. Letting Western states shut down so we can't help address mental illness isn't going to solve the problem. And allowing people to occupy parks, break windows with impunity, uh, commit crimes with no consequences, and to continue to commit other significant crimes that feed these uh, the drug addiction and the communities that get built up around illegal encampments like this, that is not going to fix the problem. We have to be willing to address it. We have to be willing to confront those people, make sure they get help, or that they at least get taken off the streets so that they aren't spreading more problems to other people. There's a lack of political leadership in Washington State willing to address this. And it starts at the top with Inslee, it works all the way down to Seattle City Council, and we have to find solutions. We're not going to find it with them right now, apparently. They've had plenty of time to address it. We are going to have to have change, political change at some point, and until then, Seattle is going to continue to decay. Thank you for watching. If you want to learn more, go to wethegovern.com. Don't forget to share, subscribe, and like. Also, if you have any comments, please add those below. I do read them all, and I try to respond to as many as I can. And remember, the future does belong to those who show up.